Have you ever gone to the grocery store, saw a price for butter, for instance? It's $2.50 a pound, and you think, my goodness, that's a great price. I'm going to go ahead and stock up. Only to remember a little later that just two weeks ago, it was on sale for $1.99 a pound. You might need a price book. Hi, I'm Darcy from ThePurposefulPantry.com, where I teach about food storage, home organization, and family life with a purpose. For us, our purpose is to serve the Lord, to be good stewards of what we've been given, and to serve others. Today we're going to talk about my price book. $2.50 a pound for butter may be an awesome price for you. For me, I'm never going to want to spend more than $1.99 a pound, ever. The price is not the issue here, it's the habit of spending the least possible amount you can on those items that you buy all the time. Um, prices fluctuate across the country, they're different in different areas with different grocery stores, so we're not going to talk about pricing, we're going to talk about the habit. What we're looking at is buying these items during the lowest point on their sale cycle. A sale cycle is the point from time A to time B when an object goes on, an object, when a food product goes on sale. Uh, manufacturers do it generally in about a six week time period. So this week you'll find butter on sale, in about six weeks that same manufacturer is going to put the butter on sale again, generally. Um, what you don't want to do is realize that you're out of butter, walk into the grocery store and buy it for $2.50 a pound and stock up for the next six weeks, when you could have purchased it at $1.99 a pound and stock up for the next six weeks. Now that 50 cents doesn't matter, but if you just bought 14 boxes of butter, that adds up. That adds up over every item that you buy over time and you're not making your budget stretch the way it can. So you want to track those items. So what you want to do is buy your product at the lowest point on its sales cycle that you can possibly do. So you don't want to buy butter when it's on its high point on a sales cycle. You want to buy the butter when it's on the lowest point of the sales cycle. Now, also, if you're a long-term food storage person, you're not wanting to buy just for the next six weeks. You may be buying for the next two months, however long your time period is. So make sure that you're tracking that price along that same thing. That way you have an idea of what the lowest price that you can buy. When it hits that point, you stock up. So my price book is how I do it. Um, I'm going to walk you through this in just a second and go through the tour of how I set it up. What you won't find are actual prices in my book. Um, I've had to develop a new one because my, my old version of what I was keeping has just not worked for me and it's not worth it. Prices have changed since I was using it. The price that I'm paying for something is not the price that you're going to pay for something because we live in different parts of the states. We live in different parts of the world. You may not be seeing this video for another year um, where the prices have changed again. So what I'm going to do is just show you how I set it up for myself and then I will start plugging in those numbers as I begin shopping. And I'm going to give you a couple tips for making the best of that. Um, when you're going to start your price book, whether you do it on a spreadsheet, whether you do it in a book, however you decide to do it, um, you want to start small. You don't want to walk over to your pantry and list every item that you have and then get so overwhelmed with trying to track the prices for every one of those pieces. You want to start pretty small, go with op like maybe the, the 10 things that you buy the most every single week. Start with those and start pricing them what you paid for it this week. Keep your receipts, start tracking. Um, that price that you pay every week. And as it falls, know that that is your lowest price. Change your number, use a pencil, always use a pencil if you're doing this on paper. Change that number and know the next time you get to that price, then buy it again. Um, then as you, the next week, you might add a few things to it. Or you might find you just wanna stick with a particular category. So you wanna stay with just meat. So you're gonna track your numbers for meat and all the meats that you buy, you put them all in your, your spreadsheet or your book, that way you can go price all of the meats that week and then start changing that out to the lowest price as you get a better price for it. Um, those are just a couple of the ways that can make this work for you. So let's get started on the tour. Okay, first let me apologize a little bit if this is shaky. Um, I'm having to just do this one-handed while I hold my camera the right way so that you can see this properly. So I'm gonna walk you through my book real quick. This is my price book. Um, I got this book from the Dollar Tree. I got two of them for a dollar. You may be able to find this at Walmart, Target, uh, back to school is going to start happening in the stores pretty soon. Um, you can always get it at the after school sales too where you can stock up on them because I, I love having them for little list and list making and everything like that. So this particular book um, is a small composition notebook. Um, I don't even know how, uh, let's see if we can focus in on the size of it so you can see what it is. Um, and what I've done is I've put these little tabs that show me each of the categories that I'm shopping from 
produce, meat, frozen, dairy, bulk, pantry, clean, paper, personal, and first aid. Those are just the things that I find um, I shop the most often how I shop. Um, I, do, I do not do this by the layout of our grocery store. I do it by how I shop. Um, grocery store layouts change fairly often, so I never want to set up my book and then find out I have to rearrange it um, based on the fact that they changed out the layout. Now, a great way to do that is to use a three-ring binder, and you can use some of the small ones that you can change out pages if that works better for you because you're shopping at that one store and you want to shop it according to their floor plan. Then what I did is I created these little tabs because you can't really buy tabs um, that are small enough the way I wanted to use them. You can see here when I open the book, I can just pull right to, like if I want to go to the pantry section, um, I can just pull the tab for pantry and I get right to, uh, I'm sorry about that, I get right to where I need to be. And how I created these little tabs was using something called washi tape, which is a craft store item. Um, I get these, I. I found these at my local craft store. They were three for a dollar, so I grabbed three different ones so I could change them out a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're like painter's tape. Um, they're reusable. You can actually pull them off. Uh, it goes onto a piece of paper, and it comes right off without tearing your paper or leaving much residue. So it helped when I was trying to reposition the tabs. Um, it just gave me a little, a great way to pull this. The first time I tried this, um, as I started setting this up, the first time I actually took some cellophane, I meant not cellophane, some duct tape, uh, not duct tape either, it's packing tape, and I would just run, I would run a piece right across here, fold it over, and I would have a long tab that I could flip through, but I was finding that I couldn't uh, differentiate between each of the different categories that I'm using. All right, so here we go. Um, <clears throat> so as I told you before, here are all of my different um, categories that I shop. Um, if you don't see one here that you use, you can always add as many as you need the way that you need to do them. This is just totally however you want to set it up. Then when I go through and I'm hitting the fresh produce, so I've listed all the fruits that we buy most often. And then over here, I will list the price of uh, what I want to stock up at. Now, granted, most people don't stock up fruit or veg um, fresh this way for more than just a little while. Um, you want to buy fresh all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. But for me, if I find a great stock up price, I'm going to want to buy that stuff and dehydrate it or freeze it or can it. So if it's a great price, then that's the time that I buy it and, and preserve it to get the best possible price for that item that I need. So I've listed all of the ones that I buy most often. Like right now, I know I generally don't ever want to pay more than $1.25 for pineapple ever. Now, I can't get that year-round, um, and we don't eat a lot of pineapple, but if it's on sale, I'll grab it. If I need it in the meantime, I will either buy a smaller, can a smaller portion from the grocery store that comes in the little containers that are pre-cut because the price matters more and it saves me time not to have to cut it. Um, but if I'm looking for stocking up when it's on a great price in season, that's the price I'm looking for. Usually I'll find that price at Aldi um, on their sale page, but not always. So we'll just, we just kind of track it that way. Then when we go to the next section, it is the meat section. So I've listed beef uh, and I break it down into how I would buy it, roasts, and I haven't listed all the ways that you can buy a roast, but that kind of gives me some room to start tracking the price of different cuts of beef, of, of beef. I don't buy a lot of steaks. If I buy a steak, it's usually when it's in the clearance section. And I get that from my husband and my oldest son who like to eat it. Um, then we'll go with ribs, whether it's um, pork or or beef, um, however they show up. Then I can list the price here of when a great price is. Chicken, whole chicken, breast chicken, thigh, quarter, however you buy it, listed that way. If you can go back and forth between uh, organic or regular, then just do it however you buy it. Um, I just buy chicken when it's cheap if it's organic and it's a great price i i get it then um so i'm just going to list it right now whole and i've given myself room to put it back in if i find a great price for organic so right now whole chicken bread i meant whole chickens are i think see i don't even remember what the last good price for a whole chicken is I want to say it was 69 cents a pound, but I'm pretty sure it's not that cheap anymore. But that's something I need to start tracking again now that I have to buy it from the store. Pork, pork loins, pork butts in the big roast, sausage, however you buy pork, that's just what you put in. 
I buy lamb. And granted, I've listed the two ways that we generally buy it. But I usually buy lamb when it's in the clearance meat section. I don't usually buy it when it's in the, generals, in, in the general price section. Just because it's really expensive. And as much as we love it, it's not meat that I want to buy all that often at the most expensive price. So I catch it when it's on sale. Then our next section is frozen. So I haven't listed all of these yet because that's the one I have to sit down and, and do still. But I will list all the veg that I usually buy in frozen packages that I keep in stock. It's not anywhere near as much as I buy fresh, um, but this is where I'll list it. Then I've also created sections like a bread section. Um, if, I buy, if I buy frozen bread, um, sometimes we like to eat Texas toast um, or, or like garlic bread that's already made because it's quick. Um, but I generally um, only stock like a box or two in the freezer. I don't keep this store very often. But still, if I'm going to buy it, I want to make sure if it's a great price, then I'll get it then. Breakfast items that we keep, um, which I don't have any listed here because we really don't buy that much breakfast product from the, from the, uh, the frozen section. But I might list the sausages uh, if we buy them frozen and store them that way. Uh, treats, ice cream, um, Again, we don't stock ice cream in our store. In our in our store, I don't stock ice cream in our freezer anymore. It's not a it's not a treat that we like to have around because it's too convenient for us to eat, and we're trying not to eat a bunch of stuff we don't need. But it's there just in case. Meat again. I'll break this down into how I buy frozen chicken breasts, frozen um, beef patties, uh, frozen meats of that kind. And then I've left myself some room for other objects that I buy from the frozen section. But you'll see, I don't buy a lot from there. Uh, now we get into dairy. That's the next section here. Milk. I don't even know why I buy that. Uh, why I put that there? Because in for the most part, I don't stock milk for long term long term storage of any kind. We buy milk as we need it. Um, yogurt, however, I will stock up and keep a bunch in the fridge when it goes on sale. So I already know that for plain yogurt, I buy um, Greek yogurt with no sweeteners. And I usually pay about two fifty a container for it, and I buy the big containers, and I'll buy three or four of those at a time, and then we sweeten it just a tad bit, and um, we add stuff to it. We do a lot of doctoring of it, so we just buy plain full fat yogurt. My husband, however, likes vanilla, um, and so I make sure that I buy him some. Then we do small cup yogurt for him because he doesn't like to have to take reusable items to his to his office to try to clean, um, and then we do some snack yogurt every once in a while for my youngest who loves it. Cheese, however you're going to do cheese for you, I made this just a whole section because I buy a lot of cheese. So we do sliced cheese, which I usually get from the deli, or in the smaller packages that come like from Sargento or the store brand when they're cut the thicker slices, not the processed American cheese food-like product, um, but real cheese made from real food. Um, shredded. While I like to buy it in blocks and shred it myself, sometimes the time saved, even with the cornstarch they use to um, to cover the cheese so that it doesn't stick, sometimes my time is worth more, and I buy a shredded cheese when it goes on sale. I just have to find out what that real price is, what the good price is. Cream cheese, snack cheese, uh, we do a lot of smaller snack cheeses, um, flavored cheeses, so I've given myself some space there. Butter, I told you, buck ninety nine. Um, I've never really found it at a better price anywhere, but that's what I'm going to buy it at. Our next section I've broken down for us is uh, bulk. When I need to do my bulk grains, when we're buying from Whole Foods or from Sprouts, when we go in and, and stock up, or even from Amazon when I buy it from, from there, I need to go ahead and get this one written out. This is the one that I really have to go back and research to find out um, how and what all I want to put in here. Because we go through periods of buying bulk and then not buying bulk depending on um, what time of the year it is and how we eat. Uh, so we'll be buying a lot more in bulk now. Um, this is my pantry section. So it's going to be pretty much anything in the middle of the grocery store, which you spend less time in, except I have to break out a lot more sections. So um, pasta sauce, we'll look at, list a few of the pastas that we buy. Um, and the different sauces that we use, we get the best prices for those. Grains that we use, um, canned foods, soups and stocks, oils, and uh, vinegar. Then the baking section. Then the breakfast section of things that we do buy for breakfast. Oops, sorry, let that go down a little low. Then our next section is um, our cleaning section, which I buy very few cleaners. I make my own. 
Um, and so, at least for general cleaning. So the only thing I actually buy is dish soap. Dish soap. Ah, try that again. Dish, dish soap. Um, dishwasher soap. Laundry soap. Um, rubbing alcohol. Hydrogen peroxide. And cleaning wipes. Um, and occasionally I'll buy bleach. We're really getting away from using bleach in our house. But I usually keep about one bottle of bleach. That one I don't really track the price on. It's not a, a regularly purchased item, so I don't really worry about worry about it so much. But that's it for cleaning. Um, then we've moved on to paper goods. So I break down all of my um, storage bags, my paper goods. <clears throat> and on this page will probably be all of my food saver and supplies for doing my food preservation. Then we go to personal items. deodorant and hairspray I mean, that's a once a year purchase so it's not like I really need to track that price I don't even want why I put it on but it's there then the next section that's going to come that I still have to finish up this afternoon is for first aid um, to know when I can buy the best price for band-aids when the best price shows up for um, things on Amazon uh, that kind of thing that'll be what I do last but you may have sections that you need to keep for things that make the best price for you and I'd like to know down below what those sections are that are missing from my book that you might use and if you were to create a price book, how would you go about doing it? If you'd like to learn more about price books, you can click the link below to go to my price book blog post that, that gives you more ideas, better ways to keep your book um, used. And I hope this has helped a lot. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.